be open till 2.15. Okay, we have Maryland players, Don Carey and Patrick Amelian. If you'll please raise your hand, we'll get a mic to you. And please state your name and affiliation before you ask your question. We're going to start right here to the right. Ryan Hennessy, NBC 13 in Birmingham. Uh, for both of you, playing the number one team in the country right now, and Brandon Miller, one of the best players in college basketball, but zero points. Do you look into the zero points, the injury potentially, or do you expect full strength out of him? Um, you know, you, you want to expect the, the best from that team, so probably you expect them to be at full health and full throttle and going into this game, really. But, you know, they have other good players as well. Um, so really just, you know, sticking to the game plan that we have and focusing on our strategy as well. We'll go to the front, and then we'll go here to the right. Hey, guys, Ben Reitman, WMBC Sports. Your defense has really been your calling card all season long. Going up against Alabama tomorrow, are there any big changes you guys are going to implement, or is it just kind of more of the same defensively? Uh, not necessarily any big changes. Just really focus on transition and uh, preventing their three. They have a lot of good three-point shooters, so just, just putting an emphasis on that. Here to your right. Joe Goodman, AL.com. Um, Don, what did you think of Alabama's game yesterday? What were your impressions of the game? Um, they're a deep team. They play fast. They shoot a lot of threes, athletic, well coached. Um, you know, and they, they just have that pace. They've been playing at that pace all year long, really. But they make a lot of threes, and they're good at that. To the front. Ben Dixon, Testudo Times. Uh, for Pat, can you talk about, you know, your opportunity playing in the NCAA tournament and then kind of the process these past 24 hours of shifting gears from, you know, the high of that win and then immediately preparing for the number one overall seed in the tournament? Yeah, I mean, um, I've, I've been trying to get here my whole college career, so I've been enjoying every step of it so far. And um, yeah, it is, it's a quick turnaround, just, just like the Big Ten tournament. So we're just getting used to, to being very excited and then locked in a couple minutes after on our next game. Far right here. Uh, this is for both you guys, I guess Patrick first. Defensively, Alabama has caused a lot of teams issues this year with their length. And it's the short turnaround you guys have viewing them. Is kind of what are some things you're gonna have to watch out for tomorrow defensively? Yeah, I mean, like you said, they have a ton of length, um, one through five. So, so just just being aware of that, and knowing that they're gonna have that extra step, and they're all three point shooters too. So, um, really just emphasizing that that they're gonna be more athletic, likely, and, and they can shoot the ball. So we're just gonna have to be gritty and, and stop them. Over here to your left, Don. Uh, Arizona is a. I think they're eight and a half uh, point favorite, for almost four to one to win the game. Do you guys use as motivation, or does that anger you? No, nah, I mean they're the number one team in the country, and I didn't even know that the spread really. But I think if we just play our, our best brand of basketball, then we have a chance to be anybody in the country really. So it's really just about us more than an opponent really. All right, Patrick, what are your thoughts about going up against Charles Bediaka? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's another Canadian fella, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, he's a really talented guy, big, big player, a lot of length, so uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to, to competing against him. Yeah, for Don again, um, you mentioned playing your best brand of basketball. What is Maryland's best brand of basketball? Um, you know, we like to play at a high tempo, you know, cause deflections, cause um, havoc on defense as well. Uh, we're a physical team. You know, and just play together, really. When we, when we share the ball, 
and that um, the ball's popping, you know, everybody eats, everybody makes shots, and that's kind of hard for the other team to guard. All right. Uh, John Zeno with Associated Press. Uh, Don, for you, what? We, we talked about Brandon's game yesterday, but what I don't know how much film you've gotten to watch, but obviously some. What has stood out to you about Brandon Miller's game? Um, he can score all three levels, really. He's a confident player. Um, his team believes in him. His team gets him the ball in the right spots where he wants it at. Um, and he, doesn't really, he doesn't really force the issue. He lets it come to him. But like I said earlier, him having a lot of um, good other players on his team kind of helps that out for him as well because they can always branch off and create for themselves as well. take anything away from the first game or is it a whole new slate? How, how do you guys look at it? Uh, yeah, it's a whole new slate. Uh, West Virginia w was a heck of a team, but uh, when I, once that game ended, we kind of cleared that out. And uh, so far right now, it's just, just the next game mentality. Front row. Guys, obviously playing Alabama in Birmingham, it's no secret the crowd's probably going to be in favor of Alabama. What are you guys doing to prepare for the crowd noise tomorrow, and how is that going to factor into the game? Um, I think we're all aware of that, so I think the big the big step for us is just to be mentally aware and mentally prepared for that. Um, you know, we had a lot of road games this year that's been like sold out crowds against us, so it's nothing that we're not used to. It's just another we look at it as another road game, really, and we got a lot of mentally tough guys. So I believe in this group of guys to get the job done. Um, for Don, obviously you've been shooting the ball really well recently. Alabama's the top three perimeter defense in the country. Has that been a conversation these past 24 hours? And what's the focus there going in? Um, in terms of my three-point shooting, really, it's just a, a credit to my teammates finding me, really, when you know, in different rotations and things like that. And then, obviously, my confidence is, is high because I've been consistently shooting at a, a high clip. But in terms of um, Alabama's defense, you know, I think we just got to play Maryland basketball, penetrate and kick, you know, get in the gaps, make them rotate, and everything else will open up for itself. Two right here. Yeah, this question is for both of y'all. Um, pretty unique situation here. Uh, this place, this state is split down the middle uh, as far as fandom goes. What is y'all's message to Auburn fans? I mean, I've been hearing that um, all my fans are going to be in a building kind of rooting for us. But if they're rooting for us, you know, we appreciate that. If not, we look at it like a road game. And, you know, it's just about the guys that's on the bench, um, managers, the whole staff. As long as we come together, I think that's enough alone. But, you know, we'll appreciate all brand if they, they root for us as well. Yeah, I mean, if anybody wants to come support Maryland basketball, then, then we're here for it. We can use all the help we can get. Nick Alvarez, L.com. Uh, two years ago, I think Dante and Akeem were on the team that lost to Alabama with the spot on the Sweet 16 on the line. Have they mentioned anything about kind of getting Alabama back for that one? I think Javon Quinterly is really the only player Bama has that was on there too. Yeah, I mean, th those are two guys that bring it regardless of uh, situation. They don't really need motivation for extra motivation for games. I think they both just come locked in every game. And, and I'm sure, like they've treated every game, it's, it's, it's a win or die. So they're going to bring the same mentality that they always do. Any more questions? OK, guys, you're free to go to the locker room. And again, the locker room will be open till 2.15.
Logan. Hey, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Doing very well. You ready to go? Whenever you are. Uh, uh, not Kenosaw State. They just got blocked at the buzzer. It's a good play. Straight to questions. Okay, at this time we've got uh, Coach Kevin Willard and we're going to go straight to questions. Please raise your hand. We'll get you a mic and please state your name and affiliation. And make sure your cell phones are silenced, please. Okay, we'll start in the middle back. Hey, Kevin, John Talty of AL.com. You kind of joked yesterday after the game about some of the road struggles that you guys have had and it wasn't so bad being down where you were. It's going to be a lot of Alabama fans here tomorrow. How do you kind of help your team avoid getting off to a slow start and get going and not letting the crowd take over? Yeah, I mean, we just experienced it in the Big Ten tournament. You know, Indiana had 17,000 fans. We got off to a good start. Um, it's just something you got to deal with. It's the bad thing about being the 8-9 seed. It's why you always don't want to be the 8-9 because you're, you're going to get a home game on your second game. But I think we've played in enough venues uh, I don't think the crowd's the factor. I think the fa if you look at Alabama's roster, I'm more worried about that than I am the crowd. Uh, Kevin McNulty, Testudo Times. Coach, you raved about practice on Wednesday. How was practice today? What was the main focus? Yeah, practice was okay today. I mean, guys were in good spirits, good focus. Uh, it's, it's tough to kind of go. It was more of a mental day. You know, just get these guys to understand Bama personnel, kind of what they're doing in their pick and rolls. Uh, we'll spend tonight more time on what they do defensively, but today was more or less put the game plan in. And really, I, it was such a talented roster trying to get these guys to understand personnel because I think personnel more than anything with this team is is critical. Far right. Uh, Pat Forty from Sports Illustrated. Kevin, 30 years ago, you were around for a pretty big second round upset, your dad coaching. Uh, wondering if there's anything he did just in terms of mindset, general preparation that maybe you've learned from. No, he took his team to Magic Kingdom the day before. I remember because I was with him. That wasn't Magic Kingdom. It was uh, the one, with the, the, the movie one. You know, he, he just Universal. Thank you. You're handy up here. Um, he took him. He took him to Universal um, and just kind of kept it. Relax. Same thing with us. We're gonna go. I think we're gonna go to Top Golf later. Kind of get them out of the hotel. Maybe Cheesecake Factory. Get out of hotel food. But um, yeah, I, I think the most thing is every team's different, Pat. And I think this team, my team's, they're an older team. They kind of get it. They they understand the challenge. I, I like that about them. You know, they understand that Alabama's really good. They're very talented. Um, so really just letting them enjoy the experience, but kind of get them focused for tomorrow. Barry Spruill, The Washington Post. Kevin, uh, you talk about personnel as a, as a coach who appreciates talented and good players. Um, what's the scouting report on Brandon Miller? Oof. Um, well, I, you know, the funny thing about this roster is I, I think this is the most talented roster I've seen in college basketball since the 93-94 Kentucky team. I think Coach Patino's 93 with Antoine Walker and Walter McCarty. This team reminds me very similar to that team with the length, athleticism, um, how unselfish they play. Um, very similar point guards. Quint I, you know, I love the way Javon Quinterly's playing right now. Um, I'm happy for him. I've known him since he was in ninth grade. Uh, you know, the issue with, with Brandon is, you know, he, he has such good range, you know, so it's not like you can just, you know, and he's, he's so talented off the dribble and he, he uses his size. Um, you know, everyone says he's Paul George and it's a really good comparison because I think that's who he reminds me of. You, know, you just can't, you're not going to sit there and say, okay, we're going to pressure him and make him dribble. He can dribble and he can make plays and he's unselfish. So, um, you know, we'll ch we're going to try to switch up some guys on him, maybe put some taller guys on him. Um, but again, you just can't focus on him. He scored no, he, he didn't score last night and they scored 96 points. Like, that's, like, I, I haven't seen that. And that's why I think this team reminds me of that 93 94 team because, you know, they had guys that if you didn't, one guy didn't play well, they had nine guys, they had two All Americans coming off the bench. So it's, it's a talented roster. Um, and I think what I'm really impressed with them, you know, I've watched their last four games now is how unselfish they are. 
they really play, they really pass the basketball. Um, it's not a complicated offense, but it's a good offense because they're unselfish. In the back, or here, and then we'll go to the back. Uh, ben Dixon, Testudo Times. Coach, you mentioned you're going to do a deeper dive into tonight, but Alabama, third in the country in adjusted defensive efficiency, third in perimeter defense. What do they do so well on that end that will present some you know, trouble for you guys? I, it's because of how they play offensively is why they're good defensively. If you, if you know Nate, they're trying to shoot threes and they're trying to get dunks. So I guess in practice, you're trying to stop the three and you're trying to stop dunks. And so I think that's because they're such a talented roster. They're going against each other. They're trying to shoot threes in practice. I'm trying to. I'm sure they're trying to stop the threes in practice and they're trying to get dunks in practice. So they're trying to stop dunks in practice. So I think it just kind of the way they play offensively kind of dictates how they play defensively. And so they're very aggressive. They switch out really well. Uh, they play a really good drop coverage and pick and roll where they're trying to get you to take mid-range shots, which they don't want to take. You know, they take very few mid-range shots, if, if any. Uh, I think the only one I've really seen take one is Miller and Javon Quinterly. No one else has taken a mid-range. So um, I think because of the way they play offensively, it really helps them in the way they play defensively. In the back. Mike Rodak with AL.com. On, on Brandon, Nate's kind of mentioned how he's dealing with a, a groin injury in the last couple games. Have you noticed anything different about the way he's played or the way they use him compared to before that? No, I mean, I, he's such a talented player. Um, he's been through a lot. He's also a freshman that's gone through his first full college season. So I think, you know, I, like I said, like, you know, I don't think they really needed him last night. So. It's pretty impressive that you scored 96 and you don't need a, the second pick in the draft. So, uh, no, I think he's, he's big time. You know, I just think he took a nice night off and well-deserved. We're going to go here in the front middle. Kevin, in terms of you guys, like how you played this year and, and how you'll play tomorrow, what, what, is, what version of that is how you expect to play next year, three years, five years from now? Yeah, I mean – we, we press, but we really don't press. We will, we'll, we, we will get much more aggressive as we get deeper. Um, you know, I, I want to get, I want to get to the point where um, we have two or three presses, not just one press. Right now, we, you know, when you take over a job and you have 11 new guys I've never played yet, seven guys I've played for three different guys, you got to make sure you, you're really simple and you don't, you don't sit there and all of a sudden get them going remembering what the, the last coach told me or the last coach from that. So once we kind of get classes after classes after classes, we will probably play much more aggressive than we have played, especially at home. I mean, our home court advantage is probably as good as anywhere in the country. And so when you get 17,009 going crazy, like that's, it's the ultimate style to play when you have that kind of home court advantage. So we will be much more aggressive as we get, as I go farther and farther down. in West Virginia yesterday. Are you guys embracing the underdog role tomorrow, or is it just another game against a really talented team? No, I, 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 don't, I don't know. If, I, I'd be honest, I'd be shocked if our kids knew who everyone picked. They're, they're watching Netflix, you know. I don't know if they know. They, I mean, like, Pat's like a, a well known I've known Pat forever. He's like one of the most national guys. They, they wouldn't know who Pat is. Don't take that the wrong way. It's just, you know, they're, they're 18, 19, 20-year-old kids. I mean, I know who everybody is, but, you know, so no, I mean, I think they, underst they understand the challenge at hand. You know, that's what I've liked about this group. When we had Purdue on the road, Purdue at home, um, no one picked us. No one's picked us all year, but these guys don't look at it that way. I don't think this generation looks at it that way from a standpoint of they're so inundated with Twitter, TikTok, Instagram. I don't think they know who like the national media is picking. You know, that's I don't think they're turning on. I hate to say it, sorry everybody, but they're not they're not picking up Sports Illustrated. Like it's just it's just not this generation. I do, so don't don't write anything bad about me. I still follow everybody, but this generation doesn't do it. Kind of just building off of that. There's been a lot of upsets in this South bracket. Do you use that as motivation to the players, or do you, do you talk to them about that? Does it? No, no. It's 
you got you got to focus and try and stop Alabama. You can't sit there and say, hey, that that team beat that team. That's great. No, I mean like you know our focus is on Alabama. Like you can't focus on anything else besides trying to stop Alabama. That in itself is a challenge. So that's going to be our sole focus. Do we have any questions from our Zoom audience? You love Zoom. I love Zoom. We have not. Zoom doesn't like you today. One, two, three. Just pass the mic down. Want yeah. well, me to go first? Sorry. Sure. Okay. Um, again, Mike Rodak with AL.com. One of the quirks about this being in Birmingham is you also have Auburn fans here tomorrow at the same session. Does that play into it at all and give a I message would, for them? I would love for the Auburn game to be second. I'm hoping Auburn wins because then their fans will stick around. I'm afraid if Auburn loses, then at 940 at night, knowing Auburn fans are probably going to the bar. Hard to follow up that, uh, but uh, the quick turnaround. How do you kind of balance preparing versus not preparing too much? Like watching too many games versus not enough. Like how do you balance that with the fast turnaround here? I, I think you just have to get a feel for your kids. You know, we watched. Um, we did recovery last night. We talked to them a little bit about it. We watched film this morning. We just practiced. Um, and again, I, I, this, this generation does, I think, because they're so well connected, they've played against guys in AAU. They do have a better feel for who, who guys are. Um, this team has picked up scouting reports very well. And I think the fact that we really focus mostly on personnel when we do scouting, we don't, we don't do, I don't do nearly as much um, plays or how we're going to stop plays. We, you know, we have our defense and we just play our defense. It's a little bit easier this time of year because we are just hyper focused on personnel. Kevin, Joe Goodman, AL.com. Do you have a message for the well lubricated Auburn fans? <laughs> yeah, stick around. What? You know, should be a good game. And it's 940 at night. I mean, what else is there to do in Birmingham? You know, it's like come watch a great game and chill out. And, you know, I think the NCAA sells beer now. I'm not sure. Do they? Yeah, I mean, like, it's a great place to be. It's going to be a good game. They're, they got a great game. Why not? Any more questions? Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Appreciate it.
Okay, the Alabama locker room is now open, and joining us up here today are Mark Sears and Javon Quinterly, and we'll just take your questions. Please raise your hand, and we'll get a mic to you. We have a question here in the middle. For Javon, is this a little bit of maybe deja vu from two years ago playing Maryland in the second round? And what do you kind of remember about that game and how y'all shot from three? Yeah, it is kind of. Um, it's kind of crazy, actually. Um, you know, that was a really good game, though. Uh, I think we were in Indiana. And, uh, you know, we shot really well from three. Um, I remember JP, get, JP, you know, kind of started it for us. and. You know, guys were really making shots, and we, you know, we were probably playing our best basketball this season at that point. All right, Brian NC, NBC 13 in Birmingham. For Javon, just being in Birmingham, what have you guys done to try to not focus fully on just March Madness, trying to have fun around the hotel and stuff? What has Birmingham treated you guys like this these past few days? I think we've just been, um, you know, for the most part hanging out in each other's rooms, playing video games and things like that, watching film, um, recovery with, with uh, our trainer, Clark. So those are some things. Far back, Chris. Mark, I know it's not like a regular season game where you may have a larger allotment of tickets for family and friends, but you got a lot of folks coming down to see you from North Alabama? Yes, sir, I do. I have a lot of, uh, lot of folks coming. Javon, just playing in Birmingham, does it feel more like at home? Or does it, you know, or, or is it just, just the same as any other tournament game because you're not necessarily sleeping in your own bed and all that? No, it does kind of feel like home. I think uh, yesterday, I, it was a lot of crimson in the crowd. And, you know, that's always a good feeling. And, um, yeah, I feel like, you know, it's more of a home, home type vibe right down the road from T-Town, so. here in the middle. For either player, what was kind of the reaction um, from the team of having the late tip? And is that something y'all prefer? Would you rather kind of get the game over with early in the day? Um, I, we haven't really spoke about it as a team yet. Um, you know, the late tips are tricky, but you know, I think we'll be ready to go. Back. Hey guys, Ben Reitman, WMEC Sports. What are your early impressions about Maryland and what are you guys looking to do to stop them on the offensive end? Maryland's a pretty good team, pretty good team. Um, very physical, you know, they play in a really good conference. Um, you know, from what we've seen so far on film, um, you know, those guys are gonna come ready to play. And, uh, <coughs> You know, they're coached by, you know, a really good coach and, and Kevin Kevin Willard. And, um, you know, we're just looking forward to, you know, tomorrow night. Thank you. To your left. And, Javon, you've played against Maryland in the tournament before two years ago. What do you remember about those guys that are still around, Dante Scott, Akeem Hart? What challenges may they present to you guys? Um, I'm pretty sure those guys are going to play with a chip on their shoulder tomorrow. Those are two really good players. And, um, you know, that's what I've been telling the team. Like, you know, these guys are, you know, they're going to be ready to play. So we got to, you know, bring the energy. Right here up front. Uh, for both players, just with all the shakeup in the south bracket, does that kind of put you guys on a heightened awareness of, of you know, upsets can, can definitely happen? I think we've just been taking one game at a time. We haven't really been looking forward too much. You know, we're just kind of focused on Maryland. Very back. Mark, I know you didn't have the overall shooting tournament you wanted in Nashville, but you had the huge three at the end of the second game, and then the three to start 
the next game that got things going for your squad. How much did those positive experiences help you with what we saw yesterday from you? Uh, it was good to see the ball fall in in, in those key moments, and that uh, that led to me having a great start here in Birmingham. Any more questions in the back? I'll stop after this, I promise. <laughs> JQ, you seem to love the big stage. It's where you seem to have the most fun. Two years ago, that was the case, and, and yesterday, and, and obviously what you did in Nashville as well. What's different in playing in a venue like this as opposed to maybe anything else you play in the regular season? That's a good question, my guy. I feel like, um, you know, it's just a different feeling in there. I've been saying it all week. Like, you know, when March come around, it's a different feeling in the air. Um, you know, just the tension when you walk into practice or or into film. Like, it's just a different feeling, and you know, it's just a it's just an amazing time of the year. Um, and you know, all year my teammates just been pumping confidence into me, and they've been telling me like, you know, we're gonna need you, we're gonna need you. Postseason plays coming, and. You know, I just feel like I kind of answered the bell. And, um, you know, I just got, I'm just around a great group of guys who, uh, who um, you know, just push me. And, uh, you know, they're a young group, but, you know, he's really my guys. And, you know, I can't, I, I give all the credit to my teammates because they, they just always, they always pushing me, even when I was struggling. Speaking of confidence, uh, Brandon didn't have any points, and, and I know there's a nurse on a groin injury. What have you said, JQ, to him? To He's still a freshman. This is his first time in the NCAA tournament to try to keep him, because you're definitely going to need him down the stretch. Yeah, I just told him, you know, hold his head. Um, you know, I like the way he handled it yesterday. Uh, he handled it like a true professional. And, um, you know, I told him, look, we're going to need what you've been bringing us all year to, uh, tomorrow night. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm 100% confident he's going to bring what he's been bringing us all year. Okay, gentlemen, thank you.
Okay, we're ready to begin. Please raise your hand and we'll get you a mic and we're going to start here to our right. Hey coach, uh, Charlie Potter, BOL. I talked to Nick in the, in the locker room. He's talked about how he's changed his free throw uh, shooting technique. Just how have you seen them improve with that and just improve overall over the course of the season? Yeah, he had been making them after we kind of helped change it up. You know, Brian works with our bigs. He had him, had him making them at a high clip. I, you know, you kind of see he's kind of putting his hand under to get the correct. And then I feel like the more we had him doing a lot of one-handed stuff, to, he, he kind of had this side spin where he kind of had both thumbs in. Well, when you take the other hand off, takes the thumbs out of this situation. He had been making them. Uh, Hopefully we make him better than three or seven. If he could have made, you know, one more free throw, he'd had a 2015 game, which is pretty impressive. 1915 is still pretty impressive, but happy for the way Nick played. You know, I think Brian does a great job with our bigs. It, they need to make some free throws for us, though. So in practice today, uh, after this, we'll make sure we get some free throws in. Back here in the middle. Hey, Coach. Uh, Joey Blackwell, BanditCentral.com. Um, this is kind of a deja vu because you guys played Maryland in the second round of the tournament two years ago. Um, and I, you, they have a couple of players still left on their roster. You guys have Javon Quinley from that team. Just wondering, um, what do you remember from that game? And ha are there any takeaways that you're using to kind of teach your team about Maryland this year? Yeah, I mean, definitely remember it. It's a lot different. That was in the bubble. Uh, they had different coaching staffs. The style plays different. But it is Maryland, and they do have some players that were still there. So we did refer back to that game and referencing some of their players. Dante Scott, very good player. So Quinterly remembers, you know, I, we were able to – we shot the ball really well that game. If I remember correctly, I haven't gone back and watched it just because with the short turnaround, there's enough stuff I need to look at with the current coaching staff and current roster. I haven't watched that game. but. My memory serves me correct. We shot it really well and opened it up. You know, it'd be great if we shot it that well this time. But they're a really good defensive team. They're a really well coached team. Coach Willard's done a great job. You know, the, the players that they currently have, some of who played in that last game, are tough. And there's not a whole lot that you can take away from that. But it is ironic that two years later we get them in the second round again. James Benedetto with Tide Illustrated. Two questions, if I may, uh, about Nick. Just, you know, when yesterday happens, I know he's been a huge spark plug off the bench. Is that just something you were just glad to see him do? And, um, you know, when you were recruiting him from Dodge City, was that was this something that you hoped that he would be able to do when he got to Alabama? Yeah, we I, when we recruited him, we thought he could be an athletic, you know, kind of go with Charles, a little different. Charles, great protecting the rim. Nick's super athletic switchable and we haven't used him as much in switching one through five but we kind of I mean he's been good he's gotten a lot better uh playing against Charles every day in practice you know he's got three years still because the one year he had played was COVID year so you know we still have him for two years after this I think he's gonna be great you know he's, he's got pretty good skill he plays really hard he's athletic I was really happy to see him play well in an NCAA tournament game because there's been games where he hasn't played much at all, you know, and he's gotten frustrated as all really good players would without playing a lot, but he's handled it well. He just kept getting better. So, you know, happy to see him play, happy to be able to rest Charles a little bit, and hopefully you can build on that, get some confidence going when we need him. He's got a lot of confidence to play well for us. Coach, I want to ask an update on Brandon, the injury-wise, and what's the confidence level going forward that he's going to be even tomorrow for fans full force. Yeah, so Clark, our trainer, is I think best trainer in the business. Me and him talked about it today. He's getting treat he's gotten treatment already this morning, got it last night, gonna get a lot more this afternoon. We're holding them out of anything live in practice today. Not that we're doing a whole lot of live stuff with the game yesterday and one tomorrow. You know, he'll shoot and do some non live stuff. Um I I think he's gonna be all right. I mean it, it we seemed like he was moving all right. It obviously bothered him, you know. He didn't shoot it particularly well, but he seemed like he was moving decent. So we just got to get his confidence back that, that he could play with it. So, you know, I, hopefully all the non-live stuff he does today in practice, he can get to where he's moving well, shooting it well, and, and then be ready to go. I mean, he's obviously wasn't one of his better games, you know, to open, but I think 
I, knowing Brandon and how tough he is physically, mentally, I think he'll be ready to go tomorrow. Back here in the middle. Mike Rodak with AL.com. Kevin Willard said that this is the most talented team that he's seen since Kentucky in the mid-90s, just in terms of being long and athletic and, and good point guard play. Just what do you remember about that team from watching them, and what do you think of that comparison? <laughs> So, I mean, Kevin's been around basketball a long time. His dad was a great coach coming up. I haven't heard that comparison. You know, I've gotten to know Coach Patino a little bit um, at playing them last year. That, shoot, that was a really talented team. I, I, you know, thanks for the comparison. I don't know though, if I should be saying thanks. It's a lot of pressure on you, too. That team, that team was... Good. I'd like to know how many pros were on that team. If I was that was that the uh, mid '90s Kentucky? Is that Ron Mercer? If I remember right, Antoine. Antoine yeah, they they had some like NBA All Stars on that team. So I look. We definitely have some depth to us. I can say that. You know, I don't know if we'll have. Was it seven or eight guys that went to the NBA from that Kentucky team? I don't know if we have that. I hope we do. That would be great for our players if we had that many be able to play in the NBA. But well, I'll say this. I, I can't th – that was back when I was really getting into basketball. I mean, I graduated high school in 93. So that would have been like when I was in college watching a ton of basketball and remembering all those games. But w about our current team, we're deep, we're long, we're athletic. We definitely have multiple point guards in Quinterly, Bradley, and Mark Sears can play it, and you can move Brandon to the point, too. So thanks for the comparison. I think he's also trying to talk our team up to see. I don't know if we're quite that good. So we'll, uh, we'll see. He's got a really good team, too, and he's done an unbelievable job since he took over that program and, and just their toughness. And I mean, they're good. So we're going to have to play. I'll say this. We're going to play a lot better on the defensive end tomorrow than we did yesterday. Talking to some of the players in the locker room, there was a sentiment that the one thing that stuck out about Maryland is their physicality and the physicality of the Big Ten as a whole. And another thing they mentioned was having played Michigan State earlier in the year might have helped prepare your team for this game. Do you feel the same way about that and about Maryland's physicality? You know what? I mean, the Big Ten's a physical league. Michigan State, I, you should, I spent 11 years in Michigan. Went to a ton of Michigan State practices. They were physical. I mean, Tom Izzo's, I saw a little video clip of him snapping a uh, whiteboard today. They're going to bring some intensity to the game. Uh, they follow their head coach's lead a little bit, more than, more than a little bit. So, you know, I think Coach Willard's got some intensity about him and some toughness about him. I think his teams have always been tough, and they play in a tough league. So we're going to definitely see a physical team, and I think Playing against Michigan State early in the year certainly helped with that. I'll tell you what, UConn's a physical team too. We played both those teams in the same tournament. Playing both those teams, I think, helps with seeing a physical team. Tennessee in our league is very physical. So, you know, it's not as if the Big Ten's got all the physical teams in the country on it, but they definitely play a more physical brand of basketball. So, between Michigan State, Tennessee, Texas A&M plays physical. You know, we played some tough, hard-nosed physical teams already this year, and I think it'll be be good for us in preparation for this game. Here to your left. Adam Winkler, KTRK out of Houston. Kelvin Sampson has told us about your relationship. It goes back to when I guess he recruited one of your players when you were in, in high school back in coaching in Detroit. Obviously, you all are on opposite sides of the, of the bracket, and you've got your own stuff to worry about. Do you guys – maybe even share anything about his matchup tomorrow with Auburn? And if not, maybe do you give him any advice to maybe woo in some Alabama fans that might be rolling into the arena early tomorrow that'll <laughs> probably be rooting for the Cougs? Listen, I, I, Kelvin's one of the best coaches in all of college basketball. He's been that. I mean, when I was a high school coach, shoot, he's Washington State, Oklahoma, I remember. I think there was a video out on his kind of four high offense at Oklahoma. He was great. I, he's got videos out on all his competitive drills. I, I read them all. So I was fortunate enough to become friends with him. I know we're near the coach he is yet, but got a little ways to go yet. He's 
got a few years on me. But he, uh, I, I, we have not talked about Auburn. Uh, you know, you typically make it a practice not to share scouts and all that on teams within your league. So, you know, and you like your league to do well. You know, we pull for the SEC teams. Obviously, I'm a little torn in this one because I do have a, a personal relationship with Coach Sampson. We've played them throughout the year. Uh, they're tough. They're physical. They play a great brand of basketball. You know, I, when I was in, the, you know, I go to the Final Four every year. When it was last time it was in Houston, I went over and visited with him and their staff and just talked basketball, tried to learn from him, learned a lot. He was gracious enough to share with me, you know, a young coach. So he's been great to me. I'm going to pull for him. Most games, we're not, every time we're not playing for them, this one's a little torn here. But you're probably right. I'm sure there'll be some Roll Tide fans cheering for them. There'll probably be some Roll Tide fans cheering for the SEC, too. I don't know which way it would go. So I'd like it if during our game we could get all the SEC fans cheering for the uh, SEC team in the game. We're going to go to Zoom now, and Christopher Heidel is on line. Hi, Coach. This is Chris Heidel from Herbert from Radio in Baltimore, Maryland. Thanks for taking my question. Um, I know you play in the SEC. What does Maryland look like in the SEC? Do they look like a familiar team that you see a lot in the SEC, or are they different? They're a little different, but I'm going to be honest with you. You know, they're, they're tough. They're physical. They don't play nearly as fast as we do. You know, you think about some of the tougher, more physical, hard-nosed teams in the SEC. You know, Tennessee comes to mind. You know, they play – they actually run some similar actions to Tennessee, too, to be honest with you. Um, Texas A&M doesn't do it the same as they do necessarily defensively, but they're both kind of tough physical teams. I know A&M didn't play one of their better games last night, but they've been pretty good all year at least in conference play. You know, and Mississippi State's won a little bit. I mean, they've got, you know, a good big that they kind of play a little bit more inside out, you know, some sort of that way with Mississippi State. But there's definitely some teams in our league that you could compare them to. Nobody exactly, you know, there's no two teams exactly the same anyways. But we we've see a pretty good blend of basketball in the SEC now with different style of coaches. Some are play faster, some play more slow, some – you know, pounded inside more. Some are more, you know, Missouri's obviously more perimeter oriented, play a little bit more like us, like wide open, shoot a lot of threes. But there's plenty of teams in our league now that play uh, somewhere to Maryland, and I think those are a few of them. Right here up front. Hey, how, how have you seen Brandon? You mentioned his mental toughness. How have you seen him handle the enormity of everything that's gone on this year? I mean, he, he's. He's a really good kid that that I think's done a really good job handling a heartbreaking situation that we all know is just I mean it's very tough. So, you know, we've we've seen him show his mental toughness throughout the year. I, I you know, I think I think we've all seen it. Brandon Quinn with the Athletic. Uh, the two quick ones, if I can. The on Brandon, if he is limited in any way, how does that limit you? Uh, you know, he's obviously been our most talented, best player all year. Uh, if he's not able to go at 100 percent, he's probably still a pretty good player at 75, 80 percent. Hopefully, we can get him playing better than he did yesterday. If, if he just you know, he told me in the second half, like, if you don't need to put me back in, don't put me back in. Like, like it's hurting, so I didn't. So I think he'll be smart enough to know if he can go or not, you know, and help us. If he can't, the good thing about our team is we got a lot of depth. Amari Burnett played great yesterday. He's got, you know, he's not 6'9", but he's got a 6'9 wingspan and can give us, you know, he's been great on defense. He did an unbelievable job. As we talked about Houston, he did a great job on Sasser when we won at Houston. You know, we, Ryland Griffin's been playing good for us. We do have some long 
athletic wings, none of them quite as long as Brandon. We can also go a little smaller. And when we beat Auburn at our place, we're down 17 with nine and a half minutes to go in that game. We went with the Javon Quinterly, Mark Sears, Jaden Bradley lineup, kind of spread them out a little bit more, went with all three guards and, and rode with it through that in overtime. So we've got different options. Pray we don't have to go to all those. I hope he's good enough, healthy enough to play. You know, based on how much work him and Clark are putting in, I think he will be. But definitely would limit us. I mean, shoot, might be the best player in the country. It'd be nice if we had him. Uh, and I'm guessing Maryland's going to probably try to keep this thing to like 58 possessions or something. How, how do you impose your pace and, and, and do it your way? Yeah, I, they, it's definitely going to be a battle of tempo. They'd like it to be slower. We'd like it to be faster. They've got a press that they use that if you attack it the right way, I think it can speed the game up. If you don't, it can slow the game down. They're going to try to press in a way that slows the game down, and we're going to try to attack a press in a way that speeds the game up. They're, I'll say this. We're not a team that plays fast based on pressing and gambling on defense. It's not how we do it. We stay solid on defense. If you want to milk the shot clock and you want to end up in the last eight, ten seconds of the shot clock every time down and end up having to take a tough shot. We're content with letting you do that because we feel like and we looked at all the numbers, we've got analytics and all like the later it gets in the shot clock, the worse your efficiency gets. So we're content with teams playing late in the shot clock with us on defense. We're not going to gamble and give you something easy just to speed the game up on defense. So teams are are able to slow it down on their offensive end, maybe a little bit more. But but when we get a rebound, we're out. And we're trying to score in the first six seconds of the clock, as long as it's a good shot. So we're going to keep the pace as much as we can going our way on offense without doing anything different on, if, on defense. So it, you know, we play Missouri, we may end up with 85 possessions. We play a team like Maryland that wants to play really slow. I hope it's not 55, but you know, somewhere in the middle, if it could be 70, that you know, we'd be all right. So, we're we're definitely trying to play fast. They're trying to play slow, and you know, it's going to probably, to be honest with you, meet somewhere in the middle on this one. Up here to your left, Brian. Nate, we've seen teams like Furman and Princeton, you know, pull upsets already in the first round. Is there anything you're sharing with your players about you know keeping the mentality going, especially with you're playing lower seeds? Yeah, it wasn't that long ago that I was at Buffalo. And we were the underdog. You know, we were 14 seed playing a three seed in Arizona. You know, we were obviously our last year there, we were six seed. Um, you know, my first year when we made the tournament, it was our shoot, we were 13, I think, when we played Arizona as a four. We were 14 my first year getting played in Miami. Like, so we've been on the other side of this. And we kind of try to tell them what the mentality of the other side is. I mean, they're kind of in a no-lose situation. They're going to play loose. Shots are going to go in. They got nothing to lose. It's how we, it's how we were. So we we got to play hard. We're not trying to put any extra added pressure on. I'm sure they've got enough pressure. You know, we want our guys to play as loose as they can. But yeah, I mean. Shoot, they're watching games. I'm, I was hanging out with them. They got their phones out watching the end of the – I mean, it's March Madness. Everybody that's a, a basketball fan is glued to a TV set. Shoot, when I was a teacher, I made sure those were the days we had worksheets to do so I could leave the TV on. So everybody's, uh, everybody's watching these games. Our players are watching them. They're in the locker room right there. We had games on. You know, they all watched the end of the Xavier Kennesaw State game. I mean, it's – it's a great time of year to be a basketball fan, and we're fully aware that there's upsets. And we, I, we told our guys we're going to be the favorite team. I mean, if you're the number one overall seed, you're supposed to win every game out. Well, we go through how you give up upsets. You give up uncontested threes. You let teams score and transition on you. You give up second chance points. We lost the second chance battle yesterday. You know, we talk about margin plays, second chance points, transition points, points at the free throw line. We didn't do a great job winning the margin games yesterday. We got to do a lot better job of that tomorrow. So we, we've talked to the team about a lot of that stuff. Last question here to the right. Coach, we've got a unique situation tomorrow, both Auburn and Alabama back-to-back, -back, two games in the second round. Auburn plays first. The fans could stay. 
Maryland is trying to recruit the Auburn fans, saying we'd love for them to root for them for against you guys. You anticipate that being in this state? Some will, I'm sure. They can't help themselves. It is what it is. I'll say this: for our league, we. I told you, I'm pulling for the SEC. I mean, it's, you know. I want the SEC teams to do well. I think we need it for our league. I think NCAA tournament success bodes well for the league. You know, our league's the basketball in the SEC has gotten significantly better here lately. We've got a lot of pros coming out of this league. We play a great brand of basketball. We need to get some NCAA tournament success. So hopefully they're uh, smart enough to know that they should be pulling for the SEC. What's good for the SEC is good for Alabama, what's good for the SEC is good for Auburn. So, roll tide. SEC, SEC let's, let's cheer for the SEC teams. But some, some people can't help themselves, I'm sure. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it.
Mic check, one, two, one, two. Me. <laughs> Round two. All right, these guys are ready to get started. I'm going to set the tone. Well, I can. You ready? Yes, sir. All right, we're going to start right here to the right. New Bias Wilborn, AO.com. <laughs> um, <laughs> Wendell, and Wendell first, but then the rest of the guys. You know, they're like, the other day, your shot wasn't falling, I'm sure, the way you wanted it. Yeah. But you were able to stay in the game and hit free throws. What did it say about you that you're able to stay in even when the shot isn't falling like you wanted to? Uh, personally, you know, for myself, you know, I don't think how many shots I make dictates if I play good or bad. You know, I do a lot of other things on the court, and my teammates expect me to do a lot of other things on the court to keep the team going and to get us a win. So, you know, if my shot's not falling, that's just one part of my game that's not working at night, but it's other things I could do out there. And I think I showed that yesterday. And then just to follow for tonight, KD, um, what makes it about him that you're able to see that you're able to trust him in those situations, to keep going, to stay in it, to stay engaged, keep each other engaged? Uh, for me, I've been with him for two years. You know, he done came up big for us plenty of times. So, you know, I, all my trust is all in him. So whatever he with, I'm rocking with. Uh, like Haiti said, you know, um, you know, we all right, we we'll win. You know, um, he's a competitor. He's going to be on the court. He's going to make plays, you know. Um, and he's going to make the plays that we need to win the game, whether it's, you know, if he goes one for 10, it don't matter. He's going to end up making nine for nine free throws to win the game for us, you know, the ice the game. So we all believe in him. Ike Jones with the War Report. Um, when, how, how does it feel for that stretch in the second half to see the freshman come in, Trey Donaldson, and play so well for you guys in this game? Uh, it felt great, you know, just to sit back. You know, he stayed right ready the whole year. You know, didn't play that many minutes playing behind me, but, you know, the, the moment came yesterday, you know, in our biggest game of the year, and he showed up and, you know, let me rest out there. And, you know, we had a big lead and then gave me opportunity to just come in and finish the game. And, you know, we were encouraged each other throughout the whole second half, throughout the whole game, like we have all year. But, you know, it was great. I'm happy for him that he could do that, you know, in March Madness. James Mueller, the Cougar, for any of y'all, just when you look at Houston, obviously, things start on, on defense for them. What, what stands out about just the way they play defense and just sort of some of the challenges that they present? Just a body of build. You know, they got a lot of big guys at the four and five, at the three, and, and at the two. So, you know, they're just the physicality of those guys. You know, uh, they're a physical team. You know, uh, they want to try to make you uncomfortable on the defensive side, um, you know, make you take bad shots. But, you know, we just got to uh, execute our offense well and uh, get the shots that we want to take. Right here. Andy Honors, Gallery Sports. Uh, for any one of you guys, how much of an impact did the crowd yesterday have you guys um, in that game against Iowa? Uh, I would just say, you know, it's great to have our fans, you know, to be playing in Birmingham. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, we still got to go out there and perform, you know, no matter what. Um, and that energy feeds off our energy, you know, so. But it's great to have those fans behind us, and we know they're going to be behind us Saturday, but it doesn't just automatically give us a win. So we know we got to come out and compete anyways and, you know, play as hard as we can. For anybody, I know you guys don't focus on what the school West does or doesn't do, but what do you think it's going to be like Saturday with both you guys playing back to back in the same building, just the atmosphere of the fans mixing and everything else? Uh, it's going to be crazy. You know, the, with the one seed in the AFC, I think it's going to be a, one of the best games on Saturday. To the left. When, uh, I want to ask you about the bench. Uh, last night, they go on the run. Katie, Trey hitting those threes. And most of the time, it was like, I think most of y'all were out when y'all made that big run scoring run. Just how much does it give a lift for you guys as starters when y'all can turn to a bench like that and know that they, they can put up points like that and get stops like they were getting? Yeah, I mean, you know, I think yesterday, that was like one of the few games where the bench and the starters all played good. You know, like sometimes it'd be just the bench. Sometimes you just be the starters, you know, but we had all 10 guys clicking yesterday, you know, six guys in double figures. So, I mean, it's great. You know, you get to rest, get to finish the games. You know, you expect every game to be close in March Madness, but, you know, it's what expected from everybody at this point in the season to just go out there and perform. So, 
We just got to keep doing that. Katie, I want to ask you about Trey. Uh, he said that you and Wynn call him the Rook, uh, and y'all y'all give him a give him a lot of tough love, but y'all have helped him out a ton this year. Just what have you seen in him, his growth from the beginning into the season, and how cool was it to see him kind of catch fire alongside you yesterday from deep? Uh, it was awesome. You know, he just he he's a young guy that that that's willing to learn from us. So you know, it's it's good to have somebody like that. So he just take our game, the pieces that we give him, and he just take it all in one and use it. He played well last night. You're right. KD, uh, you've been known to be a man of many faces, uh, the memes and all that. Which face is your favorite face? Uh, yeah, it got to be the tongue out. I, know, I think everybody liked that one, so I, it got to be that one. For any of you guys, um, was there any additional motivation hearing some of the um, Iowa cheerleaders chant Roll Tide at you guys as y'all were on their end of the floor? Um, not really. I mean, they, <laughs> I'm not sure where that came from, but I don't think they were cheering after the game, so. Yeah. Uh, I didn't even hear them personally, but I probably would have laughed if I would have heard it. I mean, I don't, I don't know why Iowa's saying that. It don't make sense. Yeah, what are your impressions on Houston? Are there any comps that you guys have already played? Uh, I don't know about any comparisons, but, you know, they're number one seed, so, I mean, that's they're a good team, you know, so we just got to come ready to play. All right, well, what have you seen? What have you seen with them on film and everything? Like, what are your impressions of the team? Um, you know, they're a physical team, you know, a lot of veterans, um, you know, just got to get to the drawing boards. <laughs> okay, gentlemen, thank you. Shout out to Trey. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, we're ready for Bruce Pearl. Start right here to the far right. Bruce, how are you doing? Doing great. Mark Berman from Fox in Houston. How much, do, this is a typical question, how much does it affect your game plan not knowing the status of Marcus Sasser, whether he plays, he's limited, there are other guards, Miles Shedd's got a knee issue. How does all that affect you or does it? Well, we're, we're planning on him playing, you know. Um, and so, uh, you know, he tried to go, you know, the other night against Northern Kentucky. He was okay offensively, you know, but when he had to just plant, really sit down and guard, you could tell it wasn't a hundred percent. But we're, we're we're expecting him to be out there, um, and he makes a big difference for him because he's such a dynamic offensive player, and you know, one of the best guards in the entire country. Um, and so we anticipate he'll play. How cool is it for you that a guy like Jalen said he hopes Marcus is healthy and can play? Doesn't want to see him have to sit out. Jalen Williams said that. Yeah, yeah I, 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 we, got, uh, we got great kids. <laughs> we do. We got great kids in our program. You know, you know, the other night, the other day even, just on social media, you know, Zepp Jasper got asked a question about Alabama. And he talked about, you know, that Alabama is a team that could win a national championship. They're seeded number one. They're our arch rivals. You know, um, we don't like Alabama. They don't like Auburn. But there's a, we respect them. And they're in our league. And if Zepp Jasper, you know, if, if Auburn doesn't win the national championship and Zepp Jasper respects them as an opponent and somebody in their league and from the state of Alabama, and that's what he's – there aren't many kids that are like that. So Jalen Williams, hey, I hope he is healthy. I hope he's ready to go. I hope he's at full strength. Um, and uh, because that's what, that's what kids should look at each other, you know, respect each other. We got our hands full with Houston, whoever plays. Johnny Collin, the ABC 3340 here in Birmingham. Uh, after the game last night, we were talking to Dylan, and he was talking about how this team is in the exact same spot as last year's team. Last year's team, obviously, you had Jabari, you had Walker. They got bounced. He said they probably had big eyes. They were looking forward to things. But he said this year's team, we've learned lessons from that last year, and they're ready to apply it this year. How much carryover from the guys that are still on this team from last year do you still feel like to have an impact on what's going to happen tomorrow? I mean, I've heard that, but I, but I, 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 at the time, I didn't sense it, but I've heard it. So maybe there could be something to it. I mean, we didn't take anybody lightly. I mean, here's what, we played Miami. Miami beat us. Miami then went on to the Sweet 16 and got all the way to the Elite Eight and was up double digits in the second half against Kansas, who won the national championship. So if our guys think that the only reason Miami beat us was because we looked past them, I'm going to address that. Because we didn't look past them. We got beat. Um, but if, if, if they feel like um, that was the case and they're not looking past Houston, great. All right. Hi, Bruce. Uh, Jason Bristol from KHOU in Houston. Um, your institution touts the turnaround that has happened under your watch. Houston has had a great turnaround under Kelvin Sampson. Um, from afar, what do you admire about Kelvin, and is there a trait that he has that you wish you had? Well, Kelvin and I, if I cut my hair a little shorter, a little darker, and I get my suntan going, he and I resemble each other quite a bit. And we've always said that, you know, if you're in the wrong place at the wrong time, just tell him you're Bruce Pearl. No one will know the difference. Um, I admire Kelvin greatly. You know, he and I both have our sons as our right-hand men, and uh, it's so great that we are able as families and fathers and sons to be able to work together and, and do what we do. So we share that. Um, you know, I, 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 I admire how hard and physically and tough, physically and mental, mentally, Kelvin Sampson's teams always play. They never beat themselves. They never turn them. They, they'll turn it over, but it, it's forced. They never give it away. Um, you know, and, 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 and they, play with a, they play with a competence and a swagger and a toughness that, that they're well known for. And um, so I obviously admire that, you know, very, very much. Right here to your left up front. 
Dustin Ferguson, Auburn Observer. Bruce, you said all year that your team's greatest strength is going to be its depth. And March is usually a time of year where people tighten their rotations and all. But last night, y'all get a ton from your bench for as how much left y'all got to play basketball this year. How much do you think that's going to be a weapon for y'all moving forward? Well, we're going to find out tomorrow night. Um, but I've always believed, I've always believed in, in not shortening your bench come tournament time. Um, and I know that's not certainly not the way it is in the NBA. And, 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 and um, um, because I want my guys fresh and furious at the end to be able to win the game. And, um, and so um, I, think it's, I think it was very encouraging to see, you know, uh, Trey Donaldson play with, without any fear. Um, you know, he's going to have a hard time keeping wet. We're all going to have a hard time keeping Houston's guards in front of us. Um, and, and we're all going to have a hard time dealing with Houston's pressure. I mean, they get up into you and they make everything you do very, very, very difficult. But it was great to see, you know, Trey respond. Obviously, Katie Johnson's energy and scoring ability off the bench, what a, what a punch that is uh, for us. You know, Lior Berman will guard physically and, you know, he's going to make a shot. You know, even though yesterday was his birthday, he didn't make a shot. He's going to make a shot. And he's, you've got to guard him out there. Um, and then Chris Moore, you know, probably hasn't gotten talked enough at all hardly. But, you know, we got Jalen Williams with two fouls last night early. And then Chris Moore kind of dings up his shoulder again and is out for the rest of the game. And now all of a sudden I'm playing Yoan Trejor, who hasn't played much, really not sure what he's, you know, the position and, didn't hadn't gotten a lot of reps at it. Alan Flanagan moves to the four. Hadn't played a minute there all year long. And we managed to sort of piece it together, but because of our depth, because of the, and the play of the bench. Dylan Carwell had a, a, a good series out there as well. So those five guys coming off the bench helped us a lot. We'll see if those guys can, now that we're stepping up again in class. I mean, Iowa was a very good team. Houston might be the best team in the country. Mueller, the Cougar. Bruce, with, with Houston's physicality, how do you prepare for that? Um, what's key for that, especially with the way they attack the boards? You know, you just show, show watch, watch the guys watch tape and, you know, watch them, you know, just run to the glass and run through people. And knowing that, um, you know, we're going to have to put bodies on bodies and some of our guys may not be able to get a rebound, but they got to make sure that their matchup doesn't get a rebound. So it's really it's, 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 it'll, be a, it'll be our biggest challenge tomorrow. We'll be keeping Houston off the glass. Here to your far right. uh, Coach Pearl, Ike Jones with the War Report. Um, are there any things that you're trying to take from your matchups with similar, like, big teams, like when you played Kentucky and Arkansas earlier in the year, to apply to what is going to be happening with Houston? Well, we struggle to keep both those teams off the boards. This is a great, I think it's a great question, but we, were, we got physically dominated by Arkansas the second time and, and Kentucky up in Rupp Arena. Here in the middle. Hey Bruce, everyone talks about Houston's physicality and their grittiness. And I know you coached a while and you're a student of the game. What's the most physical basketball team you've ever coached against? Hmm. And I don't know that there's a most. You know, I don't know that I can even tell you one, the most physical team. I'm sorry, just there's a lot of them, a lot of good ones. Right here to your far right. Uh, Bruce, Nubias Wilborn, AL.com. Uh, starting, I um, heard you have a special day tomorrow and how would you like to celebrate that special day? But then also, what do you think it's going to be like tomorrow with Bama fans and Auburn fans in the building at the same time, you know, as both teams are trying to advance to the Sweet 16? Well, you know what? My hope is that um, our fans root for Alabama and the SEC and that Alabama's fans root for Auburn and the SEC. I, I would hope that's the case. I think some will. I think, I think some won't. Um, if I was coaching the Houston Cougars, I would do everything I could to bring up to Alabama's fans just how much they're supposed to hate Auburn, right? You know, talk about anything you could talk, talk, so talk about. Talk about the Iron Bowl. You know, talk about Cam Newton and, 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 and uh, you know, Cam beating him in Tuscaloosa. Talk about Charles Barkley. You know, talk anything, talk about anything you could talk about just to rile that, Al that Alabama fan base up to root against Auburn. But I, I honestly think, be, I honestly think that we are, we are a state that takes 
that, that has pride in our state. And um, how can you not respect Alabama and their university and their athletic program? I'm not coach at Auburn. I don't like them, but I respect them. That goes a long way, I think. No, nothing special about it. Hey, Coach. Steve Pineda for WTVM in Columbus, Georgia. Um, so from the game yesterday, it seemed like Houston struggled to keep Northern Kentucky off the offensive rebounds, off the offensive glass. Is that something you feel like you guys can attack tomorrow? Well, I don't think we – I don't think um, Northern Kentucky played so well, so hard, uh, so aggressively. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm sure that Kelvin will be cleaning that up in a big, big way. Uh, my guess is probably you know, with a lot of long shots and long rebounds because NKU shot a lot of three balls. And, you know, the inside shots, inside rebounds, Houston's going to get all those. Long shots, long rebounds. Now it's more about chasing 50-50 balls and guards. And, and I, I think um, they'll, they'll get that cleaned up. Right here. Bruce, you talked about it a little bit last night. Uh, but the fact that you guys competed so well with Alabama and Tennessee and some of these other teams this year, and you talk a lot about the confidence, keeping your guys confident. I mean, how much confidence do they have going into a game against Houston where they know they've you know, competed with some of the best in the country this year? Well, they, we should be confident and feel good about ourselves because let's just take three out of the last four games at Alabama, home against Tennessee, and then last night against Iowa. We played three really good basketball games. The game at Arkansas, the SEC tournament, they played really well. We didn't play great. So we played really well throughout the last four times we played. Can we continue to play that well? I, I just think the biggest thing is, you know, Houston's physicality, their, their ability to go get the ball, um, their length and their athleticism, um, that will remind my Auburn team of the most athletic, physical, tough teams in the SEC that we've had our hands full with. in the room happy early birthday for tomorrow <laughs> but I do want to ask you just about the fact that people always say there's a lot of pressure on the team that's seated higher obviously a season ago I know you've been asked about this that was a different state or case for you than this season but do you think that that really loosens the pressure when you are the lower seed and do you feel like your team is playing it look like it yesterday just a little bit more fun and getting to I guess experience this tournament in a different mindset I think, I think you see that in tournament play. I do. Um, the top seeds are, you know, are, are better. They've had better years. They're more talented. They're deeper. Um, they've won championships. Um, the, the seeds that are like in, in the situation that we're in, um, there may be a little less pressure on us, more of an opportunity. The prize of being a number one seed uh, is great. It, 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 it would be historic, you know, for us. You know, the prize for Houston beating Auburn would be to advance to the Sweet 16. That's a great prize, but I don't think that all year long Houston was dreaming of playing Auburn, you know. I think all year long teams like Houston or Kansas or Alabama or, the, you know, or the number one seeds in our, in our, in our tournament are the, are, the, are, the, are the teams that I think Every college player would like to try to have an opportunity to play, but you got to be careful what you wish for. Right here to the box uh, Bruce, what does it say about Wendell Green that he can remain in games when the shot isn't falling and still find ways to contribute? Well, he's he's a competitor. He's not afraid of the moment. Um, he he is uh, obviously going eight for eight from the foul line and uh, setting a new record for Auburn with consecutive free throws. And many of those free throws are coming down the stretch uh, of important games. Says everything you need to know about what a great competitor he is. Your left. Hi, Coach. Tony Reese, WTVM News Leader 9 out of Columbus, Georgia. Win or lose tomorrow, what makes this team so special just this season as a whole? Just what, have you, what could you say about your team this season? Well, um, how special this team is is still to be determined. Um, and, um, but what I'll tell you is I think the team's been fairly resilient. Um, when you, I believe, again, I'm repeating myself, but I think only Kansas and Baylor and maybe Iowa State had more appearances against the field. 
Now, what does that mean? That means on 17 occasions we played against teams that were in this field, which means it was all we wanted. And we lost some of those games, more than half. And that'll, 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 that'll knock the wind out of you a little bit. And, and that could discourage you a little bit. And so, but our, our team has continued to get up off the mat and, you know, have, we had some tough road last second, last possession losses that we shoulda, coulda, and didn't get. And yet, this team kept on bouncing back. So I would say they've been pretty, pretty resilient. Hi, Bruce. Chancellor Johnson, KPRC. Nice to see you in person. Um, Marcus Sasser's status is still up in the air, but with his backcourt mate, Jamal Shedd, what do you see when you watch him on film? Well, he's, he's the best defensive guard in college basketball. Um, he affects the game. He's not afraid of the moment. Big shots, big playmaker. Um, you know, he is, their, I think, in many ways, their heart and their soul. Um, and uh, just does a great job getting downhill, does a great job facilitating. We'll just take the ball from you. Whether you want him to or not, he's going to take your rock. And uh, so he's, he's uh, and, and obviously Houston is older and more experienced, and, and uh, he appears to be obviously an important leader for them. Bruce, I know you've talked about, you know, you, you coach your point guards hard and you coach your freshmen hard. So Trey kind of has the best of both worlds there. What have you seen out of his maturity this season and, and his development, I guess? Yeah, I'm, I'm probably harder on Trey almost than anybody else on our team. Now, you wouldn't imagine, a why would you be hard on a freshman point guard? It's because he's really talented and, he's, and, he, and he can handle it. Um, he, uh, his mom and dad were both athletes and, and, uh, and great competitors, uh, and he's been coached hard at home. So I've got, his, I've got the blessing in the family to, to set the bar high and set a standard high. And, um, but even I couldn't beat the confidence out of him. Um, which I think is great. Um, you know, point guards have got to be—they've got to be exact and they've got to be precise with their with their with their eyes, with their shoulders, with their feet, and with their with their leadership. And so I I, I hold both Wendell and Trey to account on that. Hey again, Coach. Seth got a little bit of heat for what I think was a very mature response on saying, you know, he's, he loves the SEC. And I have to ask you, I'm like, I just asked him again. I'm like, I love that mentality from a player that he kind of leans more into just being wide open and loving for both programs, Auburn and Alabama. What are your thoughts on that? What can you say to his maturity? And uh, do you want to back him up? Yeah, I mean, I, did, I, I already have, but I'll do it again. No, I, I think it's great. I, I think it says something about, about the young man. I think it actually says something about being an Auburn man. Um, that look, we don't like Alabama, but we respect them. Now, when I say we don't like them, you know what I mean. They're our rival. I've said it many times. They know this is one of the best coaches in the country. They 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 run their program the right way. Um, you know, I I don't know. I'm going to go as far as say I'm rooting for them. You know, um, but I but I'm I I I respect them, and um, they're in the SEC, and I'd like to see them do really well. I'd like to see them beat Maryland tomorrow. And I'd like to see Auburn be, be, you know, be Houston if we can, and 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 have Birmingham, Alabama, be, you know, able to be a, a place where these both these teams came from. Um, you guys in Houston know what football country is all about. You understand what that's all about. You know how hard it's been for the basketball programs in the state to even come close to competing with so many other sports, and now we're on the biggest stage at the same time, in the same location. Um, Auburn or Alabama have won either the regular season or the SEC tournament championship like five out of the last six years. I'm proud of that. I'm proud of it. We've won it three times. They've won it a couple times. OK, you're proud of Alabama. Check. Um, you're an elite recruiter. Okay. All right. How? Give me the elevator pitch on why an Alabama football fan or Alabama basketball fan should cheer for Auburn tomorrow. Um, because, um, because they respect us. They respect our program. They respect how our kids play. They, they, they. You know, when you're a gladiator and 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 you are competing in the arena, um, and you've got a worthy opponent. You want to you want to kill them, 
before they kill you. But you still, you better have respect for that opponent. And I think we, I just think we do. So that's, that's, that's about as far as I could take it. Bruce, just how have you seen Chance Westry kind of handle the, the adversity of what he's gone through this season? Chance is going to be really good. Um, this summer, he was one of our best guards, if, you know, if not even maybe close to being our best guard. And then he got hurt, and we tried to get him back from that injury, but he wasn't the same, and he, and he wasn't quite ready, and probably bad, I brought him back at point. I should have brought him back off the ball just to see. And... Um, and, and so as a result, you know, he, there was a certain number of games in trying to get him back. And, and so we'll, we'll um, you know, he obviously can't play right now. He's handled it really well. Um, he's been in the weight room. He's gotten bigger and he's gotten stronger. And, and you know, he, he's, ready, he's ready to go for next year. He's a, he's, a, he's a big guard that can get downhill, that can score on the basket. He, he, he's long. He can defend. He could score at all three levels. He's going to be a good player. Considering how athletic Houston is, how important is it for Alan Flanagan to have a really good game tomorrow night? Well, I think, I think because Alan is one of our best athletes, it's important that our best athletes are able to, you know, match up and be able to um, play well. Um, because, I mean, Houston is almost always bigger, stronger, and more athletic at every position than almost every opponent they've played this year. Bruce, obviously you guys recruited Jarris Walker out of, out of high school. What did you see out of him as a prospect, and what have you seen out of his, his first year? I saw the same things Kelvin saw, except he did a better job of recruiting him, so I don't know what kind of an elite recruiter I am. I've, I've finished second on a bunch of the guys in, in this tournament. Um, and um, I finished second more than I finished first, so I don't think that makes me that good a recruiter. Um, Jarris is a, a nightmare matchup. Um, you know, he, he uh, powerful, quick, skilled, great IQ, great motor, um, you know, 6'8 in frame, but arms that make him 6'11, um, get great upside, worker, good teammate, great kid, unbelievable family, great family. Um, so we, we work really hard. I think it came down to us in Houston. And he, and he probably chose Calvin over me. Last question right here. Hey, Coach, a couple of the guys in the locker room were talking about how much a win tomorrow would mean, considering most, if not all of them, have never been passed the round of 32. Can you speak about that personally? Well, I mean, it's, it's uh, an opportunity to play maybe the best team in the country. Um, you know, certainly the, a number one seed. We're going to be you know, on our game on both ends of the floor. Um, but uh, it's an opportunity, you know, for us to make history. And um, it's going to take something real special. Okay, thank you, Coach. Auburn's locker room is now about to close, but Houston's is opening up at 355 and will remain open till 435.
Hello. Uh, Okay, we will now take questions for the Houston players. All right. And Jamal, Marcus, you first. Uh, can you give us an update on your status, how you're doing with your injury, your chance of playing tomorrow, that kind of thing? Um, I'm playing tomorrow, um, 100%. I've been doing a lot of rehab treatment since I got back to the hotel yesterday, and you know it's going good. I'm good. I'm 100% going tomorrow. Uh, James Mueller, the Cougar. Jarris, uh, Bruce Pearl was just telling us how about his recruiting. Did you, did you remember that? Um, and just sort of, what, what do you remember from that? He joked about how he finished second and tomorrow's going to be a fun opportunity to face off. Um, yeah, I mean, I definitely remember the whole process. I mean, he's a great guy. It's a great, great program over there. Um, but I felt like uh, this was home, and I feel like I made the right decision. Although um, they definitely have a, a lot of good things going on over there, but I mean, I definitely respect him and the program a ton. Uh, Jason Bristol from KHOU in Houston. For any of the players, what impresses you most about um, what you've seen in Auburn on tape? Uh, you know how together they play. You know, they, they hype each other up. You know, when one person gets going, they try to go back to them. And, uh, you know, they play together. They're, they're a really good team. They've got a lot of good pieces, especially, uh, you know, KD Johnson coming off the bench. You know, they, they have a lot of things that you would want in a college program. So, you know, they're, they're, they're a really good team. Marcus, is there any kind of a different approach to, as to the way you play or how you play? Because you say you only know how one way to play, that's 100%. Yeah. Defensive, offensive, and, and given, try to deal with your injury as you play. Um, just really not trying to think about it, you know. Um, like you said, that's really all I know how to do is go out there and play 100%. Um, just really got to try to go out there and not think about it because I feel like, you know, you favor it or think about it. Um, you just won't be yourself. And I just really want to go out there and be myself 100%. Andy on his gallery sports uh, for any any of you guys what's kind of been coach's message after last night's game and, and really how Northern Kentucky was able to find success uh, on the offensive glass against you guys um, that our approach has to has to change you know he brought up ECU he brought up Memphis the last game you know we we come out with the wrong mindset and um, we don't play the right way and uh, we, we have to change our approach coming into to, tomorrow's game because you know if we don't be going home early. Marcus, when you're talking about uh, you know, wanting to be yourself and wanting to play and all these things, so, uh, how difficult did that make last night to not be able to kind of get your hands on things? Um, it was, you know, real tough. Um, I was good throughout the whole game until that moment. Um, so really just got to try to go out there and, like I said, not think about it. Um, go into the game with the same mindset, um, like nothing wrong, and just have that mindset that I've been having the whole season, really, um, just being healthy and going out there trying to get the W. Um, Jason Bristol, KHOU, Houston. Uh, Jamal, you mentioned about the mindset and changing it. Um, is it surprising considering you guys are such a veteran team? And um, what do you think the reason is behind that? Is it the injuries? Um, fatigue. I mean, a lot of teams I imagine are battling through a lot of the same things. So, what do you? Can you pinpoint why you feel like you're at this mindset right now? I think it's because we're nervous. Um, you know, this is my second real NCAA tournament. Mark's been in college for four years, but this is his second real NCAA tournament. First in front of a real crowd. Jarris is first. Juan with his new role first. Tremont with his new role first. And then you got three freshmen coming off the bench. So um, it, I think we were just nervous yesterday, and uh, I think our jitters got the best of us. But uh, I think I think we'll come back a lot stronger tomorrow. Right here. Chancellor Johnson, KPRC. Uh, for both Jarris and, and Marcus, Bruce Pearl called Jamal the best defensive play, best defensive guard in college basketball. Also mentioned the heart and soul of this team. For you guys, what does your point guard mean to this basketball team? Um, I mean, 
like he said, like Jamal is basically our leader. I mean, we kind of follow as he goes, go as he goes. When he's playing hard, I feel like that's when we're at our best. So I mean, we just kind of follow him, just try to stay tight on the rope, and I just just kind of play through him. Um, just as a point guard, you know, he's the point of attack, so. He's always going to point guard, the opponent's point guard. So just, you know, the amount of pressure that he puts on the ball, um, his energy, that's all we see kind of like. He started off, he jumped it off, and we just follow him. So the way he plays is basically the way the team plays. Marcus, I apologize, got in here a little late, so if you've already been asked, I just, uh, how do you feel today? What are your chances of playing tomorrow, do you yeah. think? And was it a specific? time in the game you said a play that, that you heard it last night? Uh, yeah, it was a pull up. I pulled up um, for a mid-range jumper and I think I just played it too hard. And um, yeah, I'm 100% playing tomorrow. Um, and just, I've been doing a lot of treatment and stretching and massages and things like that to get ready for the game tomorrow. Can I ask a, one follow-up to that? Um, is there any concern though about re-injuring it like you did last night and you sounded like you were, I think you said seven out of 10, which sounds yeah. pretty painful. Yeah. Um, you know, any concerns about that, that, that you could knock yourself out by trying to play again tomorrow? Um, yes. You know, it's always going to be a concern when, you know, you can re-aggravate it, re-injure it. But, you know, um, it's when to go home. You know, tomorrow's not promised. The next game's not promised. And I just feel like I don't want to just sit a game out. I just want to go out there and give it my all, you know, because you don't never know when your last game is. Brittany Quinn with The Athletic. Jamal, when you hear that, how how he plays is how we play. Um, you know, that's obviously a degree of pressure on that. How do you kind of carry uh, hearing something like that and the weight that comes with it? Uh, it's kind of an honor. You know, they look up they look up to me and look forward to following me. So it gives me something to do every game. It gives me something to take pride in every game. You know, just getting us started the right way. And uh, if we don't, then I take and I take full responsibility of that. So um, just hearing that, him giving me the confidence to do a lot of things, because you know he says he follows me, but he also leads in his own in his own way, uh, with his effort and his tenacity when we go out there. So um, we we all feed off of each other, and uh, they they follow me a little bit more, but I do feed off of them a lot. All right, Jarris, I want to ask you a follow up as well. Uh, Bruce just told the media that Kelvin beat him <clears throat> in recruiting you. And what is it like for you going up against a team and a coach that really wanted you there? Um, I mean, I try not to think about it. I'm trying to just take it as any other game. But obviously, I do have a lot of close relationship with the guys. I did take two two visits there. I mean, they were close to my family, with my parents. Um, I mean, they still contact them with their birthdays and things like that. So, I mean, obviously, we're close. But, I mean, it's a, it's a basketball game that we're trying to win. So, I mean, you can't really focus on your friends and people who you're close with and things like that because, I mean, I mean, I'm, I'm a Houston Cougar, so I'm going to try to win for my team. And um, an obvious question, what does it do for you and your teammates to hear Marcus say he is going tomorrow night? Yeah, he's a tough dude. You know, I, I felt like he was going to go just because, you know, I know him as a person, not just as a player. And uh, he's tough. You know, he, he fights through a lot of things. And uh, he doesn't really miss a lot of days unless he has to. So I knew, I, I knew that he was going to push through because, you know, he's a tough dude. Yeah, Marcus, you've told us in the past how you get up a little extra for road games with tomorrow essentially being a road game with all, you know, the Auburn fans. Does that give you all that extra, a little bit extra adrenaline going into it? And just uh, yeah, definitely. You know, we think tomorrow's game is going to be probably 75, 80% of Auburn fans. So um, just going, we're just going to treat it like a road game. You know, um, when we go into road games, we always say it's just us versus everybody. That's one of our sins that we say before every road game, and that's the same thing we're going to say tomorrow and try to go out there and get the W like, a, like it is a road game. Chancellor Johnson, KPRC. Jamal, just piggybacking off of being a leader, there's being a point guard, and then there's being a point guard for Kelvin Sampson. How much have you learned from him um, as being, uh, being a point guard uh, under his tutelage? Uh, kind of taking his mentality, you know, he doesn't miss any days. <laughs> Coach is uh, he's the same person every day, uh, regardless of the day, no matter how early, how late. You know, I've never even seen the dude yawn. So um, 
y'all can backdoor that. I'm so serious. Like he doesn't ever look tired. He's uh he's always the same person when he steps on the court. And I, I just try to I try to do that myself. You know, I try to be a be his 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 person on the court and um just try to do what he does every day. So he he, he inspires me every day just by being himself and just being the same person. So I try to do that. Okay, man. Thank you.
Okay, we're going to start a little early with Coach Hanson. Okay, we'll start with your questions. We'll go to the back and then here. Hi, Kelvin. Jason Bristol from KHOU. Hey, Jess. Uh, hey. Jamal mentioned that he thought maybe the guys were nervous, being that it's only his second tournament, Marcus's second tournament, first for Jarris, et cetera, et cetera. Is that what you think maybe caused some of what happened last night with the way your guys performed? I don't know. I'm, I'm past that. That was yesterday. We're getting ready for Auburn. That's what's most important. You know, we've got, um, uh, if that's the way he felt, then I'll, I'll go with him. I trust Jamal. I know uh, Northern Kentucky didn't have any freshmen. Uh, we had three. If you, sit, if you sit around long enough and you watch this tournament, it's almost a surreal feeling for freshmen to be in it uh, the first time. Um, your toughest game is always your first one. You know, um, look around. Over the years, I've had games that uh, I thought we played well in. We just didn't play well enough to win. Uh, yesterday, I didn't think we played well, but we played well enough to win. And sometimes that's uh, um, looking around the country. I know a lot of teams who would trade places with us. Right here. Brian Smith, Houston Chronicle. Marcus was just saying that you guys almost have to take it like a road game where it's us versus everybody. Obviously, tomorrow night will be different because it's a tournament in Auburn and Alabama. But do you, do you like hearing that from, from your players, that, that just us versus everybody approach and, and knowing that the entire 90% of the arena will, will very intensely be against you guys in that game? 90%? <laughs> I'm hoping 90. <laughs> um, you know, we've been pretty good on the road. Um, I think the teams we played this year that Auburn is probably most like is uh, Alabama and uh, Memphis. Uh, depth, they have really good depth. Uh, they, they bring guys that can score, you know, in a hurry off the bench. Um, Donaldson last night, uh, Johnson. You know, and it's the, the big kid, I mean, they, they've got good players. Uh, their starting five is um, very athletic, great size, um, a lot like Alabama. Um, but for us, you know, it's, it's um, you know, every game's a challenge. I think every, everywhere we played in the league this year was a packed house. Hopefully that helps us, you know, um, I think I think we'll I think we'll play I think we're going to play good tomorrow night, you know, that's um, that's been our mo, you know. We've um, I trust I trust my kids, I really do. I, I trust this team. I love this team. This has been one of my most enjoyable um, uh, teams that I've coached. You know when you know when the season ends at this stage, you're either going to have won it all or you're going to lose. So. Whether it's now in the second round or the third round or the fourth round, you know, whenever, or you win it all. Uh, but regardless, you know, um, inevitably, uh, I'm sure I'll shed tears either way. But sometimes it's not because of the finality of it, it's because you don't get to coach those guys again. You don't get to um, sit in a room and laugh and joke, uh, hear, their, hear their crazy. Uh, put down to each other, um, you know, just, you know, I've always thought you can hear a good team. You can always hear a good team. You know, bad teams don't talk. They don't communicate. You know, they don't share. But the good ones do. And this one, this one does. You can always hear this team in a good way. You know, my, my wife always says that um, her favorite moments of, um, um, our journey is listening to them sing in the back of a bus. You know, that's, 
of all the things I'll miss, I think it's that stuff. Not the wins and losses or stuff like that. You know, I've, I've lost enough games for everybody. But the um, relationship you have with your kids, like tomorrow night's challenge. You know, it's, you know I'm, 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 I'm done talking about whether it's fair or not fair. That's, that's neither here nor there for me anymore. It's not for me to say anyway. It's not Auburn's fault. They didn't ask to be seated here. Um, so for, for us, it's just getting ready for it. Being, being ready for the opportunity, being re ready for the challenge, and go attack it, and, and, and let's see what we can do. That's, uh, that's kind of where we're at with it now. <clears throat> Kevin, we all know what you, your family's gone through to help build this program. Auburn really touts what Bruce has done to turn around um, its program, and I was curious what you admire most about Bruce, and I asked him this as well. Is there a trait that uh, he has that you wish you had? Um, I asked him the same question, but in reverse. I can tell you what he said, if you'd like to know. Um, it's all right. I doubt he said it uh, to be shared. Well, I guess he did if you asked him, huh? Um, uh, Bruce is just uh, his, um, his enthusiasm for life. His, his passion for helping kids, um, and his ability to coach. You know, Bruce is a really, really good coach. Um, you know, he's, uh, he's what the old guys would call a ball coach. You know, a boy, a, you know I, I, can, I can hear um, some of the old coaches that I grew up admiring or uh, looking up to, they'd say, that boy there can coach some ball. You know, but that's a North Carolina thing. That's what the North Carolina high school coaches would say. That boy over there can coach. That boy over there can coach some ball. That's what I would say about Bruce. But Bruce is Bruce is one of those guys who never has a bad day. He's upbeat, positive. Uh, you know, it's just just a good guy. <clears throat> New bias, will born ale dot com. Um, Coach Sampson. Um, Bruce was, he was joking when he talked about how if he were, your, if he was you, he would try to rally the Alabama fans who will be here to root against Auburn. What would that pitch be if you want to root, when you didn't root on your side against Auburn? Well, from what I know about Auburn, Alabama, uh, Auburn, Alabama I don't think I have to. I think I just did. We're playing Auburn, 6'10". Let's go. <laughs> we need some help. Roll Tide. <laughs> is that good enough? I mean, it's roll. How do they say Roll Tide? Roll Tide. Yeah. Well, Roll Tide, 6'10". <laughs> That's a, I don't think I have to go much further than that, do I? <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah, call my, call my old buddy Wimp. Wimp, get him fired up. Seb is, you know, I've known Wimp a long time. He still doesn't know how to pronounce my name. Every time I talk to Wimp, he said, Kevin? Nope, nope, it's not Kevin. It's Kelvin, Kelvin. Ah, no matter, Kevin. The Wimpster. <laughs> Him and Sonny still do that radio show. Podcast. I bet it's popular, isn't it? Yeah, it's, those two, those two guys, they're a piece of work. Um, just you may have already answered this before, but on to bet the basketball, the yeah. actual game. When you when you look at Janai Broom, what do you see as like trying to defend him, but also what he does defensively? Yeah, he's very versatile. Um, uh, great instincts to block shots, obviously. Um, you know, when Bruce runs his uh, flex actions, you know, not a lot of not a lot of centers uh, these days, and he is a center. 
a lot of centers can make those um, flex, flex cut passes. He's pretty good at that. That tells me Bruce trusts him. Um, and then uh, making threes. You know, it's, he doesn't shoot a ton of them, but if you look at his percentage, it's pretty good. So, and I'm sure one of the things Bruce sold him on when he got him to transfer is that he would develop his game. Um, I don't know if he shot threes at Moorhead State, but uh, he, he looks good shooting them now, and I think that's a credit to Bruce and his staff. Bruce was mentioning that he had recruited Jarius, and it pretty much came down to you and him. And obviously, he chose Houston. Just what what is it like recruiting against a guy like BP? Um, I don't I don't know if it's like that. Um, you know, the, the deciding factor uh, for Jarius was his father. You know. Uh, and I know his dad liked Bruce a lot, but uh, we don't really recruit against another school or another coach. You know, we try the best we can is to sell them on our program. You know, uh, I forbid my assistant coaches from being uh, negative about other schools because I know what that's like. You know, if we're not good enough to get a kid based on our school versus running another school down, not interested. We, we sell Houston. So as far as recruiting against another school, um, I know Bruce, Bruce is, uh, uh, and they would have told me, he was always positive about us in recruiting Jairus, and we were very positive about them. So I, I don't get into the negativity thing or running people down. Uh, maybe it's my experience and age, I don't know. But um, if a kid wants to come to Houston, we'll take him. But we're not going to go do, um, you know, ignorant stuff to do it. We'll get kids based on whether we're good enough or not, uh, based on what we have, not what the other school doesn't have, you know. Um, so, but uh, I haven't recruited against uh, Auburn um, or schools that Bruce coached at uh, a lot, but. Um, but then again, I don't know half the schools that we're that's recruiting the kids we're recruiting, so I don't I don't really pay attention to that stuff too much. Alex Scarborough with ESPN. Uh, Marcus came in here and said that he's 100% going to play. Uh, where do you think he stands right now from where you sit? And also, do you need to be a little bit more cautious with him after he aggravated the injury, obviously last night? Well, he didn't re-injure himself. Let's make sure we get that straight. Um, it's the first time I ever had a um, um, injury uh, discussion about one of our kids. Uh, most of the time, nobody knows about it. Uh, so it's not the first injury I've dealt with. I deal with his injury like I've dealt with it, every injury of a kid we've had for 34 years. You know, it's up to him and the trainer. I don't make any decisions. People say, why did you play him? I did. I played him if he's healthy. The trainer thinks he can go, and the kid thinks he can go. I, I trust Marcus. Like, I trust Jamal. I trust them all. Um, if Marcus is hurt, he'll say, Coach, I can't go, and then I won't play him. If he's out there and he can play, then that means he can play. So, well, I, he'll, he'll play as many minutes as he can tomorrow night. I don't know how many minutes that'll be, but that'll be up to Marcus. You know, he's our best player. I know that. Um, but I don't treat him any different than I treat anybody else if they're injured. I treat them all the same. Any more questions? Okay, thank you, Coach. Okay, thanks, guys.